the humanness of alternative building is hugely appealing to, to people. And why not build houses that last for hundreds of years and that are healthy at the same time? Rammed earth is a mixture of clay and sand with a little bit of cement. And you can build very strong forms and then tamp the stuff into the forms. It's compacted. We take 10 inches of mixture and with pneumatic tampers, we compact that down to seven. Another 10, compact that down to seven. We call each one of these a lift. All these lifts pile up until you have a wall. One wall a day, usually about eight by eight feet. And then the next day we pull the formwork off and it's finished. There's finished exterior, there's finished interior, it's insulated, it's structural, and it has thermal mass. I think the thing that drew me to alternative building in the beginning was just that idea that I wanted to do something different, that I wanted to be part of the solution. And I remember the first time that I saw my own rammed earth wall. You pull that form off and in one second, that second you realize that's gonna be there for hundreds of years, just like that. For me, initially, my attraction to rammed earth was really a logical one. I realized that if you could form it up and ram it and pull the forms off and it was done, you didn't have to paint the inside, you didn't have to put siding on the outside, you didn't have to vapor bury and insulate it. It was just finished and it was load bearing. You know, it's a lot of people like, oh, you have a concrete house. I said, that's not what concrete feels like. Have you ever touched a concrete floor? This is not concrete, it's like completely different. People don't know. And then we had an open house and it was really interesting. Some of the people that came to check it out saying like, you're building a pink house. They wanted to paint those walls over. And it's like, no, 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 this is the idea. You know, you take off the forms after the ramming and you have a finished product inside and outside. There's no painting ever. We would like, yeah, destroy the whole beauty. I had to do a trip to Germany, and so everything worked out that when they started ramming the segment there, I wasn't here. And I realized like there's no colors in this segment. They just use the basic colors. And so I said, no, we can do better than that. We have all these different color pigments. So I got a couple of bags of white cement, and every morning I went to the sand bank and gathered a few buckets of white sand and mixed that with all the different colors. And then we mixed those in with the walls. You can see like all the swirls of different colors. It's nice for me to meet a client that comes to me with clear values. Petra had a clear vision of, of what she wanted here. She wanted a home that was cozy and comfortable with thick walls and big windows. She wanted something that was timeless and elegant. And one of the things you're building with is the values that your client brings to the table. Well, I think it's really hard to walk the talk. I know like that's, that's the game I play in my life as I try and walk the talk and everything and it's hard. And I think people in alternative building are all of that ilk. People who want to walk the talk. And Marcus and Eva, I mean I have really come to admire how they walk the talk. I mean they say what's important to them and they act on that more than any client that I've had. We know what works with the land because we've lived here for 10, 15 years. Like a lot of the things that we finished in the end, we didn't have that picture in our minds that showed us the completed thing. We did it and they said, oh, you know, this works or it doesn't. So everything now evolves as we go. It wasn't just about radiation. Like we wanted to not have to use pumps if we don't have to for septic and fresh water. And we wanted to be also open enough and that was for the solar. And um, people always keep saying the technology isn't here yet and I've heard this for the last 30 years, right? And then you hear these announcements from research labs that they have this amazing solar panel now and we just gotta wait for it. And I wanted to show that no, we don't have to wait for anything. But it's not as easy either as just putting some solar panels on the roof and then going about your business. It is lifestyle adjustment. Working with minimal energy, minimal change to the land, making improvements with everything you do, permaculture design, um, that all works with working with your hands too, right? Like 
um, it's one thing to say, you know, this rock bothers me, I want that gone, and then you go away and hire someone and you come back and you don't see what went into taking that piece of rock out. Uh, and for what, maybe it's not even necessary. But doing things by hand, well, you gotta find the easier solutions. Yeah, so it's, um, I'm convinced that is the way for us to, to evolve this place, with, which is the house plus the environment around it. We're gonna build eventually with the most abundant material on the planet that lasts a long time. Why not do it now? We knew we wanted to build with rammed earth. We knew we had to insulate it, and it was developed in 92, 93. We have three companies now. There is Sirewall Inc., and then we have Terraforma Builders, and then we have Sirewall USA, which my son owns half of. Most other rammed earth, you know, people are afraid to go over one story, afraid to go over eight feet. Well, we're going 100 feet, and that's because we've figured out how to make rammed earth strong, and that's, I think, a landmark uh, development, and that makes it possible to do much more ambitious projects than was previously thought possible. Where we're going is obvious. We're going to houses that don't require heating. In a house that has massive walls, uh, the temperature of the walls is what's heating you. This surface radiates to that surface, radiates to the ceiling, radiates to the floor. It's all evening itself out through infrared energy. There's no fans, there's no pumps, nothing to break down. It just does it. It's like gravity. It always works. I'm 64, and I launched into environmental building when I was 17. And I thought it would be a matter of five or 10 years. And we are in a worse condition now, environmentally, than back in the 1960s. And we continue to manufacture and use carcinogens in our homes, in our furniture, in our clothing. Most of my life I did conventional building, so I was exposed to a lot of those toxins and carcinogens, and, and I've had cancer. And that's, um, but it does give me the freedom to speak about cancer in a way that I didn't feel I could before. It's actually kind of breathtaking that we're willing to jog for cancer, but we're gonna paint our houses with uh, carcinogenic paint. I like to think most people wouldn't make those decisions if they knew all the toxic materials that are in their buildings and the short lifespans. You know, why don't we have a building code that says all houses must be healthy, no carcinogens, no phthalates, and has to last 200 years and be net zero energy? Why not do that? I mean, if we could get all the housing in Canada to be net zero and last for hundreds of years, we'd be so far ahead of every other nation. But, you know, I would assert that the logical, reasonable way forward in dealing with cancer is to address the, the cause, not the symptom. It's our system that tells you, like, you don't know anything about it, so you better don't touch it. Whereas it's really not true, it's like all basic living skills that we're not being taught anymore. It just feels natural and good and I don't understand why not everybody is building like that. It's, it's a no-brainer, I think. Uh, the world's changing really fast and if we start talking about solving all the big problems in the world, I think one of the things we have to look at is those things that are just simply closest to us around our lives, our communities, our relationships, our food, our water, and our shelter. What we live in is a big part of our lives. I think that structures, homes that support those changes that we're gonna be going through in our lives, structures that reflect the values that we hold and that we wanna hold as people, I think that's a a big part of the solution. There's some things we clearly need to do in order to survive, and those decisions affect building. What are the values um, that we as a people hold dear, and how do we build to reflect those values? I think that, you know, we gotta bring the human touch back into our built environment.
in the beginning, people thought we were a bit nuts, you know, because here's yeah. these people that are building a house out of mud, literally mud. You know, there's judgment. So we had to challenge a lot of those, but we both thrived off of stirring the pot, right? We like to shake things up a little bit and see what happens.